Previously on The Bill. Is everything all right? I'm giving the baby away. I'm applying for full custody of the kids and stopping your access. You're never going to see your children again. A videotape came into our possession featuring Shane and yourself. You're joking. You. Well, the uh, elections for Federation, they're coming up again. You think you're going to venture Well, I've done it before, haven't I? Well, why would you want to do it again? Imagine if we might end up being represented by if I don't. I mean, the last bloke was a blitz. Imagine if he got elected again. How do you feel about that? Apathetic. Hey, get down! You want to watch yourself up there, mate? You might fall. I won't fall. I can't. What are you doing up there anyway? I can see everything. All around. You can see anyone coming. Well, just get yourself down, eh? Do you think Debbie was serious? Definitely, she meant it. It doesn't surprise me, really. I've always thought she was a bit unmaternal. Yeah, but to announce you're giving up your baby, just like that. Yeah, but she's being defensive, though. Must be a hard decision for her. Poor little thing. It's not even out of hospital. I don't know why she thinks I'd spread it about. I wouldn't. Not something like that. And you mustn't say anything either. What's going on in there, Mother's meeting? Hurry up, Cass, will you? All right. Look, I don't worry, I won't say a word. What's your name? Kieran. How old are you? 18 and uh, three months. Good to be back. Yeah. Hospitals do my head in all those sick people. <laughs> Safe, you right? Who's that? I arrested his brother for burglary. Seems pleased enough to see you. Nobody really knows me. That's what it's like around here. You can't help getting involved with people. But you can get too involved though, can't you? Is that why you were beaten up? Yeah, that was mistaken identity. They mistook you for another cop or someone else? Look, can we just forget about it, please? I'm going to sort it out. They just got the wrong face. You know, you look really nice with your hat off. Better, I hope. Of course. You know this patch well, don't you? Yeah, I do. Well, I could give you a few pointers if you like. We could, um... Or maybe we could discuss it over a drink. We could. Yeah, Oscar to 140. One four zero receiving. Go to 15 Mallam Street to the all night convenience store. The owners are Mr. Chowdhury. Complaint of drug dealing outside his premises. Yeah, one four zero received. Come. Where's home? 64 Waverley Park. Around the corner. Alright, then you can uh, put your stuff back in your pockets. Have you taken anything? What sort of anything? Well, drive. Medication? Nope. Makes me sleepy. You okay? See your friend? Yeah. Best friend. Look, I'll tell you what, Keenan. Why don't we take it home, mate? Somebody must be missing you. Eva. You managed to talk to Debbie yet? Um, no, well, I haven't managed to find the right moment yet. We'll get a move on, will you? Before she starts signing the adoption papers. Oh, is that for me? <laughs> You'll be lucky. You left me a note. Yeah, yeah, Shane Pella. He was one of your suspects in the serial killer case, wasn't he? Yeah, still is. He's a scumbag. Well, Cass and I brought him in yesterday. He's been making porno films of his girlfriend. What do you got on him? Well, not enough. Well, as you know, we pulled him in for taking photos of Tina Pope as she lay in the funeral parlour, but we couldn't prove anything. What about the others? Liz Chambers was an old girlfriend, and he drank in Vicky Carson's local pub a couple of times, but that's it. And we can't make any connection to Lucy Corrigan. Do you think they might have known Shane Powell? 
Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah. But we haven't had time to check their phone records yet. Oh, I don't mind having a look. See if his number pops up. Uh, don't let the governor catch you doing MIT work. We've got enough backlog of our own. Look, I thought the idea was to get this bloke before he kills again. I'll get you those mobile phone records. What's this? Convention? No, nothing. I was just telling Duncan about Cass and me bringing in Shane Pellow. What's going on? Oh. Perhaps they're talking about us. What? Is there nothing better to do round here? I was kidding. Sarge. Um. How you doing? That's not why I'd be crying, I told you, yeah? I'm fine. We found Kieran swinging off the scaffolding poles, practicing for the circus. Thank you, officer. You don't seem to be surprised. Nothing Kieran does surprises me anymore. Bye. Kieran's a diagnosed schizophrenic. Does he have medicine for it? Yes. Well, you want to make sure he takes it? I do what I can. You know he could have seriously hurt himself, don't you? Yes. I'll keep him out of harm's way. Thanks again for bringing him home. Sir, what's the problem? These boys, they stand there all day selling their filthy stuff. Which are? Drugs. All right, Ruby, stay here and look after Mr. Chowdhury. What are you going to do? I'm going to tell matey boy over there his fortune. Now, what's your game? I'm waiting for a bus. What do you want? Can't you find anything better to do? <laughs> and what would you do if I did? Right, come with me. Right, stand over there. I haven't seen you for a while. I've been in hospital. Now, Chick, what you got? Not much left now. Bit of speed, bit of coke. How much? How much do you want? Some muzzy pan, I swap you for two grams. These are worth more than those. Yeah, well, which one of us is holding the handcuffs? All right, the jelly's for two wraps. Safe. Am I cool? Why don't you lay off doing it in front of his shop? You're lucky you can make me a move. Don't. You all right? Yeah, he's clean. There you go, egg and bacon, as requested. So you going for a dinner, what? What? Are you going to stand for fed rep? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Well, I like the planet, you know. You make it sound like a pregnancy. <laughs> well, there are similarities, as it comes. Oh, yeah, dodgy tail nap. That is a pull. Oh, that's hardly weird. Hey, I'll tell you what, you'll have to pack all of that in. Over keenness. Believe you me. Unit available, Waverley Park area. That's where Kieran. Take it. I want to see Cass. You don't give in, do you? She's not available. Yeah, but she's on duty. What's it got to do with you? Do you deal with every member of the public like this? Only the prize idiots. OK, I'll wait. You're wasting your time, mate. Well, that's my choice. I make myself comfortable. Well, don't bother. It's not a club lounge, you know. until he killed himself for someone else. I'm okay with this.
Governor tells me you've decided to put the baby up for adoption. Good old Jack. You're not seriously thinking about going through with it, are you? The social worker has got the ball rolling. So that's that. Look, the DCI is worried about you. We all are. Look, maybe he's just a bit depressed, eh? I'm not depressed. Look, I know you think you feel nothing for your baby at the moment, but that's normal. It soon changes. You have no idea. Eh? You know I do. At first, when you have a baby, your life gets turned upside down. It's not your own. But that doesn't last long. It soon begins to make sense. Everything falls into place. Now, you give him a chance, and you'll get a bond so strong you won't want to let him out of your sight. Believe me, there's nothing you wouldn't do for him. When I say you have no idea, Eva, I mean it. Literally. Why would I want to keep Tom Chandler's child? As a reminder of him? So that I don't forget that Tom was a rapist. He didn't even want the baby. He wanted me to have an abortion. He virtually booked the appointment. None of that is the baby's fault, though. It's not mine, either. The child has got its life, and I've got mine. He's better off out of it. And away from me. Got that now? Yeah. I'm going out to a suspected arson. Someone's burnt a shed down. Well, do they need a DS in attendance? Anything to get out for an hour. Why? Because Eva is doing my head in. She's clucking round me and she's driving me mad. Now, how can two girls make this many phone calls? Ooh, tell me about it. Danny, how are you getting on with Lucy Corrigan and Vicky Casson's phone records? I think I've found something. Check this out. Both of them called this commercial number. You have reached the Candy Evening News. For an operator, press 1. For editorial, press 2. For telesales, Danny. press 3. What are you up to? Some inquiries, Sarge. Urgent? Quite. Quite? Well, put your coat on. We're going to a shed fire. A shed fire? Now, that's quite urgent, isn't it? Maybe we'll be putting it out. What's this? Cop idol. It's a singing competition. A karaoke night? Yeah, but with a difference. What's it for? Superintendent Akaro reckons we need a proper Christmas bash and morale booster. Don't they have some silly ideas? That's your bell. You told Cass that I'm here, yeah? No. Well, I'm not going until you do. I'm not here to run messages for you, Simon. You better tell her. Or? What do you mean, or? Just do it. No, I won't. I know that she doesn't want to see you. Are we clear now? You've made up your mind, have you? Yeah. You know, you've ruined everything. Cass and me, we had something going, but you lot, you're jealous. No, that's where you are, jealous. Out. You can't throw me out. This is a public place. Get out. You know, you have absolutely no idea what you're doing. You bloody women, always the same, always sticking your noses in. You know, you're nothing but an interfering witch. What's this going on? There's been a fire in the shed round the back. Mr Elcott here lives next door. He reckons his son came and tried to put the fire out. Oh, yeah. They're taking care of the hospital now to get his brain sorted out properly. Anyone else here? No. Good. Reg. Ah, this is Mr Pollard, the householder. Detective Sergeant McAllister. Oh, perhaps we'll see some action now. What do you think happened? Think. I know what happened. My next door neighbour's son set fire to it. That's what happened. Did you see him? No, but I saw him digging holes all over my lawn two weeks ago. And he painted all sorts of daft symbols over my car three months ago. 
painted your car. It washed off, but that's not the point. He should be locked up before he kills us, or himself, or both. Thank you. Mr. Cameron, give my colleague too. Well? It's pretty straightforward, really. The fire officer reckoned someone poured petrol on rags, then set fire to him. You can still smell it. The petrol would have blown back and burned whoever was leaning over it. Oh, that kid with paramedics, Kieran. Sarge, you don't need me for this. Well, what do you want to do instead? I need to follow up a few telephone inquiries. On? The serial killer. I knew you and Duncan were plotting something. On your own head. Any complaints from Jack Meadows? Keep me out of it. Thanks, Sarge. Hey, Gary. The minute you walked in the joint, burn. Yeah. It's a singing competition. I fancy myself as Shirley Bassett. Yeah, I might come as fat boy slim. Yeah, but he's a DJ, he doesn't sing. Exactly. I can't sing either, mate. Well, when did that ever stop anyone? Not me, that's for sure. And what about you? Who are you going to come as? No one. It's extremely childish. It's just a bit of fun. You're going to join in, aren't you, Brandon? I'm not very interested in dressing up and singing, really. What's wrong with that? Oh, come on, Kathy. Just trying to inject a bit of Christmas spirit into your dull little life. And this will count. Brandon. I'm sorry, I'm not in the mood for all that. Your wife. Yeah. The kids were supposed to spend last night with me, they didn't show up. Is it because of a driving bad? She blames me. Right, but last night was special, Kathy. It's Zoe's birthday, you know, I bought her presents. It's not my daughter's fault. When the kids didn't turn up, I, I rang, right? It's no answer. Maybe they were out. I went round. Her girlfriend was there. I saw them through the window, you know, being all cosy. Seeing them all together, I, I, I didn't trust myself, you know? I didn't even bother to knock. What are you gonna do? There's not much I can do. It's Tanya, now she knows that if I cause a scene, then that supports her case to stop my access. I was supposed to spend Christmas with them now. I'd... You shouldn't be allowed two lesbians looking after your kids. They need the father. Thank you for your support, Kath. No, well, is there anything I can do? No, afraid not. Does that feel better? Mm. Now, don't touch that. I'll be back in a minute. Kieran, I'm Detective Sergeant McAllister. I have some questions to put to you about the fire. Mr Pollard said, did you set fire to it? I don't want to talk about it. I need to tell you something. Well, if it's about Kieran, I think we should talk in front of him, don't you think? Now, Kieran, I need you to answer my questions. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, of course. Did you set fire to Mr. Pollard's shed? Kieran, if you won't talk about it here, I'm going to have to take you in for questioning. That means you have to come with me. I did it. Sorry? I set fire to Pollard's shed. Lead on, Sergeant. Wouldn't that get compensation for being beaten up, then? Gary, how would I know? Well, you were always seeing him up at the hospital, weren't you? You're his mate. Yeah, I am, but I'm not his keeper. I never said you were, did I? But still. Still what? Well, I'd probably get a few grand for getting knocked about like that. Think about it. Inconvenience, pain and suffering, nights in hospital, it all adds up, you know. Yeah, well, I wouldn't know. Yeah, well, I do. Could be a very tidy sum. Big help for a couple starting out. Do you have a couple in mind? Don't try and tell me you and Nick aren't seeing each other on the slide. You have got an amazing ability to put two and two together and make five. Well, tell me I'm wrong then. Oh, you know, we're just friends. Just good friends, eh? <sighs> Gary, you're so wrong. Look at me. If you say so. Called us, sir. He's still doing it, selling his filth. Your friend saw him off, but he's back again. Is there another exit to that alley? Yes. And can you drive around there? Yeah. Right, Gary, take the car around the back and wait there.
Let's have a look, shall we? Some Azapan jellies. They're mine. Hey. Yeah, and what's this? It's feed, it's all for personal use. I've got nothing else. I'll give you personal use. I'll shove these so far down your throat, you're gonna need a search party to get them Damn out. Damn, it's my medication. You're dealing, you're tosser, you're nicked. Kieran, Miss Fogg here is a psychiatric social worker. Hello. Hello. Now, you're not under arrest. You're just helping us with a few inquiries into the fire. Are you okay being here? Yeah, I'm pleased. Please. Why? They watch me. You can stop them. Who? People. What people? In his garden. In Mr. Pollard's garden? Yeah. Are they in his shed too? I don't want to talk about the shed. Kieran, you're going to have to. Now, did you set fire to Mr. Pollard's shed? I've got to put a stop to it somehow. Right. Mr. Charles Murray Mackenzie, arrested for possession of speed. Check will do. Yeah, we'll bear that in mind. Empty pockets. Look, I've not been dealing. Can you all take a note of that? These are all for my own medical use. <laughs> Does it say Charles Murray Mackenzie on here? It doesn't say anything on there. Well, Mr. Mackenzie, the packaging for your medicine reads to. Mr. Nicholas Klein. Well, I can explain that. Save it. Gary. Right then, what's your name? Check. Well, you better get Nick down there. Find out how this lowlife got hold of his medicine. But keep it quiet, yeah? We don't want everyone knowing Nick's business. So? Do you want the good news or the bad news? Just tell me. I didn't find any direct connection between Lucy and Vicky and Shane Pellow, but... But what? Both Vicky Casson and Lucy Corrigan placed Lonely Heart Sads in the Canley Evening News, just before their deaths. Wow. And what about the others? Well, I didn't find any record of Tina, Miriam or Liz, but there's got to be something in both Lucy and Vicky place. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Hey, that's brilliant, Danny. What is? Oh, Danny's just made a small breakthrough in the serial killer murders. He's just found out that two of the victims placed Lonely Heart Sads. I couldn't find anything that connects all the victims to Shane Peller. So you've been working for MIT on my time? Only a couple of inquiries, girl. Come on, Jack, he did make a breakthrough. Yeah, he did, yeah. Yeah, well done, Danny. Thanks, girl. That's one in the eye for MIT. Better go and tell your people the good news, Duncan. I will. Are you free now? Sure. Will you come with me to interview three? Mr. Russell is there. Okay. Forty eight we want. I don't see noisy neighbours as a police job, it should be the councils. It is. Yeah, so why are we going? We've got to be seen doing our bit. Getting involved. Thought you'd be all for that, Nick. Go on then. Since it's you, stay here, I'll check it out. Nothing. The jellies have. I'm holding them. For? For a friend. Nick Klein, is that your friend? What happened? I don't want to talk. Right, I'll charge you. They're for personal use. I'll only get a caution. Theft. You'll get a year. I didn't steal them. Wake up, chick. You nicked them from a policeman. I didn't nick them. He'll say so, cos I'll tell him to. And you're going to put the machine on? Caution me. You've got ten seconds to save your neck, otherwise it's a year for theft. A year in jail or tell me what happened, you're not on tape. I'm saying nothing. Look, I know about Nick. Just please tell me. We swapped. I gave Nick some coke for them. I knew it. Right, this is what you do. You say it was all a mistake. Nick dropped them this morning when he was searching you. You picked them up, you were holding them until you could bring them down the station. Okay. The lost property, yeah? 
Right. Then you got arrested, you got scared, you started to tell stories. Have you got it? Well? You can't get hold of Nick, he's not answering his radio. Doesn't matter. Mr McKenzie's decided he's going to tell us how he came by the tamazepam, aren't you? Hello? Anyone in? Cool, I think. There's no one about, never mind any noise. Waste of time. Aren't you going to say I told you so? Earth to Nick. You're miles away. Am I? What did Gary want? Gary was trying to get you? Oh, uh, yeah, it was uh, nothing. Come on, let's get a move on. I'm here to see someone. Who? PC Castrickman, if that's all right. Yeah, what's it about? I'd rather speak to her about it, if that's all right. Yeah, but if you could just tell me what it's about first. I think my boyfriend's a murderer. Mr. Alcott, you said to me you started the fire in your neighbour's shed. Yes. I don't believe you. Well, I did. How did you start a fire? Sticks. I, I put them into a little pile. Just sticks. And matches. It was started with rags. Sticks and matches and rags. Did you use anything else? What sort of anything else? Turps, paraffin? Petrol. Mr. Elcott, you don't smell of petrol. I changed my clothes and washed my hands before you arrived. But your son does. That's because he was trying to put the fire out. Whereas I set it and I was more careful. Shane a murderer. What makes you ask that question? I found something at his house. Bracelet. Belongs to Liz Chambers. He told me to ask him about her. She was his girlfriend. Lived with him, didn't she? Now she's dead. What did he say? Nothing at first. So I asked him if the bracelet belonged to her. And he got angry. Really angry. Has Shane ever hurt you? No, not yet. But sometime. You think he will? Yeah. So do I. OK. Why do you do it? Why? A simple enough question. Why do you set fire to the shed? Uh, I don't like my neighbour. Why not? He's rude about my son. You're lying. Your son did it. I'm not. I did it. Why do you persist with this rubbish? I'm making an admission of guilt. I want to be charged. Well, perhaps you should speak to a solicitor. I told you, I don't want one. Just charge me. Wasting police time is a serious offence. I don't intend to, Sergeant. Give me a pen, I'll sign my statement. Case cleared up. Listen, you, it doesn't work like that. I decide when cases are cleared up, not you. So you'll go back to a cell and consider your position while I check out your story with Kieran. You can't rely on what he says. I did it. So how long have you been going out with Shane Pello? About a month or so. Do you know if he's ever used classified ads to meet women? I don't think he'd need to. He can be quite charming when he wants to be. Has he ever mentioned a uh, Vicky Carson or Lucy Corrigan? No. He wouldn't speak to me about the other women anyway. I think there are others. So what's it like living with Shane? He's so possessive. He won't let me do anything by myself. And what happened when you found the bracelet? It's amongst his things. Asked him whose it was. He 
said next girlfriends, so I asked him if it belonged to Liz Chambers. And he realised I knew about him and her, and got angry. He said I didn't trust him, and I was snooping like all the others. DC Glaze and I want to get to the truth. You know what I mean by the truth, Kieran? Yeah, of course. Not an idiot. Did you set fire to the shed? I don't want to discuss it. Now, your dad said it was him. It's very important, Kieran. Your dad could be getting himself into terrible trouble for something I think you've done. Can I talk to him? Once we've cleared up this point. I have to keep him at bay, you know. Who? People. What people? Down there. I don't understand. There are tunnels all under London. All the way across. And they feed information up and down the tunnels. What information? Messages to me. They're on television too. That's why I cut the plug off ours. Better safe than sorry. What about the Pollard's shed? Two of the tunnels cross and meet in their garden. Bisect. It could be dangerous for us living next door. So that's why you dug up the garden? How do you know about that? And that's why you set fire to the Pollard's shed. I need to talk to my dad. Did you set fire to the shed? I don't want to talk to you anymore. Shane's different. He's not like other people. Different? Is that good or bad? He's obsessed with pain and death. I thought it was exciting at first. I thought I could handle it. But now... He scares me. In what way? He goes too far. When we're... I tell him I don't want to do it, but he, he just gets angry. And he won't stop when I ask him to stop. And, and sometimes I, I think he's... Do you think he killed Liz Chambers and the others? Do you think he's capable? Turning my calls. Looks like we're going to have to speak through our solicitors. It's a shame. <laughs> hey, thanks. What for? Oh, just listening to me go on and vent my problems. It's all right, any time. What are friends for? You can't go back to Shane, you know, you can't. I don't want to. Have you got anywhere else you can go? Yeah, I've got a friend. She can put me up. You won't find me there. I've arranged for a car to take you home. You can collect your things and then they'll drop you straight at your friends. That'd be great. Thanks. You must think I'm stupid. No. Only if you decided to stay with him. A lot of women wouldn't have the guts to leave. I think you're really brave coming here. Cass. Please. Please. Freya. Look, I know that I've treated you badly. <laughs> do you, really? Yeah, of course I do. You went away without telling me? I couldn't. Your wife's out there somewhere and you're looking for her. How do you think that makes me feel? I love you. Oh, she could come back at any minute. Who would you love then? <laughs> you. I don't believe you. It's not a basis for a relationship, is it? And then there's your sister always sticking her nose in. Look, I know Pat can be a bit protective, but she hasn't got involved recently. I mean... She thinks that we're over. Over? Why? Well, I only told her that so she'd stop interfering. And you think that's all right? But you don't understand what she's like. No, you don't understand. I come second to everyone. Your wife, your sister, even your job. I can't live like this, Simon. I'm sorry. I never meant to make you feel like that. Yeah, well, you do. And I'm not putting up with it anymore. It is over. Your sister will be very pleased. Well, and that's it? Yeah.
Yeah. Debbie. I need your help. Sure. Far away. It's the arson. I've got two men in custody, father and son. The father claims he started the fire, but I can't crack him. I know he didn't do it. So who did? His son. What does he say? Nothing very logical. He suffers from schizophrenia and burns. The father says his son got them putting the fire out. So what do you want me to do? Talk to the father. He'd relate to you. He's not listening to Danny or me. Right. Let's go and see him, shall we? Mr. Alcott, I'm DCI Meadows. Sergeant McCarthy here thinks you're not telling the truth. So let's stop mucking about, shall we? We believe that Kieran set the fire and burnt himself in the process. You found him and he called the ambulance and the fire brigade. No, I set the fire and he got burnt trying to put it out. If you persist with this, you could go to prison. I'll get a suspended sentence. The charge is arson and that's serious. I don't have any criminal record. You're taking a big chance. Look, uh, could it have been an accident? What sort of an accident? Well, perhaps you or Kieran were smoking and, and you knocked some petrol over. Which I happen to have with me? Yeah. No. K Kieran doesn't smoke, neither do I. Well, you could have done. No. Why not? It won't stand up to scrutiny. And if I say that, I'll have changed my story. You two will use it as a lever to get me to change my mind. We want you to change your mind. I set the fire. I've never heard anything so stupid in my life. He is offering you a way out. Kieran is all I've got. And I'm all he has. <clears throat> what is wrong with that man? With him? What's wrong with you? He told you it was the best way he could think of helping his son. Well, what's he want? A sainthood or something? People will do anything to protect their kids. Will they? Look, what am I supposed to do? Because he's not going to budge and we've got no more forensics that's going to stick. He's adamant. Give him what he wants. Send Kieran home. Leave the rest of the CPS. Mr. Alcott, did you set fire to your neighbour's shed? Yes. In that case, Mr. Pollard will be pressing charges of arson, and I'll be handing your case over to the CPS. Good. Do you want me to drive you home? I can walk. I like to walk. It's not far. Is there anyone else at home? No. I've only got my dad, and he's still here. They'll bail him, I expect, Kieran. When? When the inquiries are finished. Soon? Well, I'm not so sure. As soon as I can. Do you want me to ring your social work? Do you know her? No, but I thought she could see you into the house. Why? She's never done that before. Besides, I've got a key. <laughs> Don't worry. I won't be home alone. There's always people. Me? Yeah, take a seat. Why did you find dealing with Russell Alcott so difficult? I don't get you. You were confused. <laughs> they were confusing. He was protecting his son, and you got annoyed with him for it. You're a parent yourself, you know that, Debbie. Well, I wouldn't behave like that. How do you know? Because I'm not stupid. Well, neither is he. It's a tie that binds. I couldn't feel like that. That's rubbish. You won't let yourself feel like that. You just hate yourself at the moment. Do you know what I hate? I hate people endlessly asking me, are you all right, Debbie? How are you, Debbie? I hate 
people tiptoeing around me. I had a baby. Women do. It's a challenge, isn't it, having a baby? It changes everything. It rocks you to the core. But you would be a good mother, Debbie. I thought... I was sure that I didn't want him. I thought... giving him up would be the right thing to do. Go and see him. I can't. Why not? It's finished. The decision has been made. I'll take you to the hospital now if you want. Were you? Yeah. Go on, get your things. Hello, love. Yeah, look, uh, I'm going to be later than I thought, yeah. Uh, yeah, something's come up. What are you two doing here? Shouldn't you be in school? Sierra Oscar to Sierra One. Yeah, go ahead, Sierra Oscar. Please go to 64 Waverley Park. Report of a disturbance. Yeah, all received. Not again. Get back to school. I'll be keeping my eye on you two. Come on, Betty Bay, buddy up. Hey, what's hey. all this then, eh? Up for a bit of slap and tickle after the shift, are we? Shut up, Gary. Where's Nick? He's not in here. Has he gone? I've no idea, Cassie. I haven't seen him. Now get out, will ya? Stop trying to catch me in the buff. <laughs> Pervert. I don't believe this. Hey! What's going on? I'm putting an end to it all. Oh, I don't believe this. I told you so. Stay back, please. I'll ask you. If you'd arrest him in the first... Stay back! No, no, no you don't. I'm annoyed. Uh, I've got to stop them. They're going to get out. You don't understand. Well, we understand, all right. Come on. Yep. I'll uh, catch you later. I've got to go to my car. So we're going to go for that drink? Yeah, of course. So, where do you want to meet? Tonight? Uh, yeah, I've just uh, got to do something first, all right? Oh. Have I misunderstood? No, 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 definitely not. Uh, it's evening sweet. I'll, uh, I'll ring you later. Well, don't feel you have to. I don't. I want to. I'll call you. Have you seen Nick? He should be out front. But if you don't catch him, I can pass him a message. I'm seeing him tonight. For a drink? Sorry, is that a problem? No, it's fine. I'll see if he's still here. Right, come on out. Is my dad still here? Yeah, probably. Do I have to come here again? You should have thought about that before you started scaring yeah. the neighbours again. Right. You can break the terms of your bail. If you commit any offences while on bail, we will re-arrest you and you could go to prison until your trial, understand? I don't have any mental health problems, Constable. Now what's the info? It's been handling all the neighbours again. Kieran, why? They are sending a message from underground to stop them getting out. Yeah, he was trying to board their doors up. I had to. We're going to get the police doctor in and do a psychiatric assessment. Will you be sectioned? Oh, I don't know, sir. That's for the doctor to decide. Oh, Kieran. Can I have a word with him? Be my guest. Son? I'm, I'm sorry, Sonny. It, it's my fault. I, I let you down. You haven't? I should have taken you to the hospital in the first place. I don't want to go back there. I know you don't. You, you can't always have what you want. I don't want to go back to the hospital. You need proper care, Kieran. I can't help you anymore. Please, Dad. I'll take my medication, I promise. I just want to go home. I won't be far away. I'll visit every day, until you're better. Dad. Kieran, come. So, you want to change your story about the fire? That's the least of my worries. Is it all right to pick 
him up. He's got your eyes. How could I give him up? Of course you couldn't. I won't give you up. Come here. There we go. I'll do everything I can to help you. You are coming home with me. Outside the station, you said you weren't doing this anymore. Oh, Cash, stop playing at being a copper. We're off duty, right? We went off duty when you swapped your tomazepam for coke. I pulled in your little mate, chick. I had to lie for you. How do you think that made me feel? I had to lie to the custody sergeant and to Gary. I even had to let your poxy little tow rag dealer off a charge. All right, all right. No, it's not all right. Oi! What did you do that for? Because I'm running around covering for you, putting my job on the line, and what are you doing? Snorting coke and chatting up any available female? You mean Ruby? She's been here two minutes and you're already trying to bad her. That's what this is about. You haven't got a life outside the job and you don't like the fact that I might have. Well, so taking coke's a life outside the job, is it? Oh, shut up. Just because you're not happy with your muppet of a journalist boyfriend, don't take it out on me. What's that? this got to do with Simon? Well, then what's it all about then, Cass? I don't ask you to go running around after me, do I? Who else is going to help you, Ed? You're up to your neck, innit? All this business with Phil Hunter. How long do you think he's going to keep his gob shut about your dirty little habit? He's got you right where he wants you and you're not even bothered. Look, for once in your life, will you please stop whining? This has absolutely nothing to do with you. What happened to care, Nick? Really? Well, do me a favour. Don't bother because I don't give a toss about you. I know you don't mean that. Yes, I do. I don't give a toss. That's right. Go on, you walk. Just keep out of my life. Next time on The Bill. Oi! I want to see someone in charge. Now. What's his name? Jordan Kane. I talked to Pat. I told her how I feel about you. I told her she's just gonna have to accept it. Do you think you'll actually uh, go through with it this time? You bet. I'll send you a bit of cake. Ah!